First, let's separate the terms between Ethernet and IP. When most people think of Ethernet, we think in terms of a physical connection. You may have an Ethernet port on your computer in which you plug in a cable that then connects to a router or switch. This connection type is typically called a LAN connection. However, Ethernet is not a connection type, but instead an IEEE protocol. In our everyday use of the Internet, we typically just say that we are connected via Ethernet or wireless. It's much easier to say Ethernet than get into the weeds of the actual terms of connection protocols, stacks, layers, and the like. Before we get started on today's video, if you love our videos, be sure to click the like button below. Then make sure to click subscribe and the little bell to receive notifications of new RealPars videos. This way, you never miss another one. Now that we have said that Ethernet is a protocol versus a physical connection, let's get a little into the weeds of some of the terms. Most communications to our computers or devices travel over one or more networks via something called a packet. Since there's a multitude of devices that may want to send and or receive data, there have to be some common rules for sending and receiving these packets. This is where the protocol comes in. One of the most commonly known protocols is the TCP IP protocol. This protocol is widely used in internet connections. The term TCP IP relates to TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol, where the IP is internet protocol. There are other protocols, such as Open System Interconnection, or OSI, but for simplicity's sake, let's stick with TCP IP for now. The TCP IP is a layered protocol. Those layers are applications, TCP, IP, and network. Basic functions are explained, but there are many, many details in each layer. Each layer has a function that it performs, and when complete, is then passed to the next layer. In terms of the Internet, the transmitting computer will pass its data to the application's layer. This layer works with the application software to provide communications that may be required, such as HTTP, FTP, POP, DNS, IMAP, etc. That layer will add some data that will identify and direct the data and then passes to the TCP layer. The TCP layer's job is to pack and unpack data and do some error checking. Onto the IP or Internet Protocol layer, where some more identifiers are added and then the data is transferred over the network layer, who then packages the data into Ethernet packets or whatever other protocol is required prior to transmission over to Internet Service Provided Device. These data move up and down the stack or layer continuously, getting packed, unpacked, headers and info added, deleted, etc. So. Through this TCP IP protocol explanation, you learn that the transmission of the data results in an Ethernet packet. The device, applications layer, which can be Facebook, Google, a VFD, or a flow transmitter, will present its data and layer by layer, the data is massaged and is then transmitted via an Ethernet packet to the network layer, which in turn is connected to your computer or PLC. Now that we have explained the Ethernet packet, we can get into the IP part of the Ethernet IP or EIP description. IP in this case now correlates to industrial protocol versus the previous description of Internet protocol. Confused yet? The IP part of this protocol is simply the use of the Ethernet infrastructure in conjunction with the industrial protocol which used common industrial protocol or CIP layers that combine with TCP IP 
or user datagram protocol, or UDP layers, to create a protocol that can be used to support data exchange and control applications. We need to break down the TCP IP or UDP protocols slightly to give you an idea of which application may use which type. In the TCP IP protocol, there's somewhat of a send receive acknowledge relationship. The packets go down the stack, received at the device connected to your network, a receipt confirmation goes back up the stack to the applications layer. This type of protocol may be used with a VFD where you command a speed and need to ensure that the VFD received the message. Conversely, with a UDP protocol, this is the continuous transmission, not requiring a receipt acknowledgement. This protocol would be used in something like Ethernet I.O. on your PLC or a flow transmitter. These devices will constantly send the state of their data. If a packet wasn't received, it's not a deal breaker, as the next packet is right around the corner. CIP uses object oriented design to present things like a device profile for a VFD. If you've ever used a CIP message instruction within your PLC device, you know that you research the type of data you desire, such as frequency, speed, or faults, and you add that assembly number to your CIP instruction. The data exchanged is a number of data registers that you in turn map to your tags for desired data. This EIP is compatible with many standard Ethernet switches used within the industrial automation arena, which makes it easy to implement. Combinations of data speeds of 10 or 100 megabits per second are easily handled with these off-the-shelf switches. In the simplest terms, Ethernet IP is Ethernet packets used with the industrial protocol of CIP, TCP IP, and UDP layers to provide the required data to your controller. Want to learn PLC programming in an easy to understand format and take your career to the next level? Head on over to realpars.com.